Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Some Christian Guy, and as usual, find me on Facebook, YouTube, One Way, and on BitChute. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who follow me on BitChute, just know that it's unreliable uh, in terms of uploading and stuff like that. And also there's a feature where it's supposed to take stuff from YouTube and move it over um, to, to BitChute uh, without me having to directly upload it. It doesn't always work so that means that if you want if you want the most recent stuff go to youtube but it will get there uh, to bit shoot but it will always be like a day or two late um because you know uh even if i upload sometimes it uploads but then it doesn't show and i've got to delete and re-upload it's a, it's a big it's a pain in the butt um but worth the hassle and all that sort of thing anyway today i'm going to talk about be talking about one of the most uh, uh, so I'm filing this particular video under stupid things Christians say. And because this, uh, every single person on the planet, right, whether atheist or Christian, is well aware that there's always a, a handful of Bible verses that w that when a particular subject pops its head up, Chris, you can you can bet your bottom dollar that that every that Christians are going to quote this handful of verses not because they know anything about what they're talking about at all not because they understand the content they just throw it out because they imagine that it has something to do with the with 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 whatever the controversy is and because they've satisfied themselves that these one or two verses allow them to do whatever it is they think is right uh, so the verse is supporting the ideology rather than the other way around rather than the other way around and it's just and when it comes to the issue when it comes to the issue of of do we drink alcohol or not do we eat meat or not do we or whatever or anything that has to do with health brings upon the abject it bring it, it people go full retard basically is what happens now it's one thing for to see the world do it because you see this out in the world there's a controversy between people who want to eat a regular omnivorous diet right those are the people in the middle we want them never so we want meat and vegetables then you have people on the one opposite extreme where they're like no no nothing nothing but vegetables and not only nothing but vegetables but nothing but raw vegetables so you basically need to live like a cow or a rabbit okay and then you and then you have people all the way on the other end that say not only must you eat nothing almost nothing but meat literally there are actually people like this who exist nothing but meat absolutely nothing but meat and they will go so far as to say that even fermented meat from rotting meat is good for you and you must go and eat rot there are people i i'm not joking for the sake of of whatever there are people who even go is all the way on the other extreme who will actually get jars of put meat in jars and stuff like that and leave it on the windowsill to ferment okay and they will eat that and they will leave it for like a month two months to, to ferment uh it's, it's just and and in this entire space out there in the world you have just the most abject stupidity under the sun going on about this entire thing everyone is no one is interested in what's best or what's good or what it's all just ideology battling out now you can understand why this would happen out in the world because the world has no principles it's simple as that right the the secular world as much as it wants to pretend and all this kind of stuff this the 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 world out there outside of the outside of religious world have no principles they have no basis for for ethics and principles and stuff like that so that's why these debates rage on because rather than live by principle the way christians are supposed to they they then become the when you don't live according to principle if you remove the principles then the society descends into legalism where everyone tries to justify their points by bringing out tiny little minutiae and little facts and this and this and that in order to try and prove their point and it descends into a whole legalistic uh issue right and that's why in the world when it, wherever wherever you see uh, uh, an absence of principle you will find a plethora an overflowing of legislation and 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 just legalism where it's nitpicky nonsense all over the place rather than live according to principle now unfortunately unfortunately 
the same thing is happening in Christendom, where there is no excuse. Why? Because we have the scripture, we have our guide that gives us the principles to live by. So, whenever this issue of, of whether it's should we drink alcohol, what is, should we be eating meat, whatever the case might be, the following verse without without fail, without fail comes up. It's the following verse. It says here, right? So Colossians 2, verse 2, chapter 13, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Every single time, every single time that this discussion ends up, you bet your bottom dollar that every dum-dum on the planet is going to come up and is going is gonna, to is gonna put this forward. And basically, it's a license to do whatever they want. This is ba- this is essentially what these people are using the, the the verse for, to escape certain biblical principles in order to do whatever they want. And what do you end up with? What you end up with is a world out there, right? And here's this, here's another verse that they come up also with, basically every every single time. Uh, let me see. Uh, da da. Ah, here we go. Here's another verse. This is the second verse. Bet your bottom dollar it comes out. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defileth a man. So these two verses, without question, absolutely without question, these verses will come out. And essentially what you have, this is an excuse, is basically two verses that are used in order to for the individual to say, basically, I can do whatever the hell I want and you must just allow me to do so because the Bible says you're not allowed to judge me, is essentially what happens and what is the what has been forget about theories and and suppositions what has the real world consequence of this type of thinking uh, what is it done what is it achieved in the western world which is predominantly predominantly christian right what is this type of thinking brought about it is brought about in the west the, the west is known as the fat degenerate nations that's how they're known the fat degenerate unhealthy nations where the majority the majority of people are overweight or obese the majority and the same is happening with our our children our children are growing up by the time they're five years old they're obese right and we've got people dropping dead left right and center from heart attacks from fatty liver issues from all kinds of fat related issues and furthermore in the west and nowhere else do you have hordes of women fat obese women running around claiming that we are beautiful and wonderful at any size and you're not allowed to say anything and those fatties that happen to be Christians will use these verses as well in order to, oh, but you can't judge me because the Bible says you can't judge me. And so what do they end up doing? They end up spreading the false witness. So here's what it, here's where I'm getting at. These people end up spreading the false witness that it doesn't matter what you eat, right? And what they end up doing is then these these fat uh, ideologies, these feminist types that are like fat, that glorify fatness, right? And want to have fat women plastered on every cover of every magazine all over the place in bikinis. They don't care whether you like it or not. You must just somehow uh, rip out your biological sensibilities that prefer not skinny, but decent proper shapely woman no no you need to somehow dispense with this biological impetus right and 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 buy into this delusion that you are healthy at any size despite the fact that there are people dropping dead from heart attacks and diabetes left right and center in spite of that okay now where is the problem where this is what this is what it has resulted in so obviously there must be a problem because here's the thing we need to understand something, right? Here's a, here's a simple e- example. Why do people in the West, why are they so enamored with, with pagan religions, specifically Eastern religions? Why? Because they've got yoga, because they've got martial arts and all of these kinds of things. They have a health, a health ethic to them, a health message or a health doctrine, right? And they're popular. They're famously popular. 
right? And yet, so the pagans have figured this out, that there seems to be a connection between the state of your physical health and your ability to have some form of spirituality. Because the fact of the matter is, right, that you are what you eat. So if you're some degenerate and eating garbage all day, you are going to put yourself in a position where you are de where your brain is addled your brain is depressed you are you are depressed your emotions are all over the place so you become emo uh, 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 emotionally volatile and because what people seem to refuse to understand is that there is a link between what you eat and your personality what you eat and the way and how you think and how and your ability to think and reason and all these kinds of things what you eat and your IQ there are a million ways to completely annihilate your IQ, right? But there are very, very, very few ways for you to actually not only to preserve your IQ, but actually improve it somewhat, right? And that is the way of the world. So in the West, people are getting more and more fat, degenerate, unhealthy, stupid beyond belief, ignorant beyond belief and they're all chumping prancing around right including christians saying it is my right because the bible says you cannot judge me now is the bible actually saying this is it actually saying this what is the context in which these verses occur right let's go back to this one so it says here let no man therefore judge you in meter okay so that's there's the verse right so what comes before it Right, I've just just a few verses before it says here, and you being dead in your sins and the circumcision of your flesh, flesh, hath quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. What is that referring to? The handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing to the cross, right? So some people, right, so you get some dum-dums, you get some, some dum-dums who come and say, oh, the, the Ten Commandments have been dispensed with. That's what they want to say. That's what they, they, they want to tell you that, that has, it has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments, right? And if you're not sure where this is going, this has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments, because we need to be balanced here. Nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. All right. Handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Now, let's go to another. So this is Colossians. Letter to the, let's go to the letter to the Romans. Here's what Paul says. Do we make void the law through faith? God forbid. No, we establish the law. Which law? Which possible law could we be establishing? Yeah, what possible law could we be establishing? Does not the Bible, does not Jesus himself says, heaven and earth will pass before one single jot or tittle will ever be passed away from the law. And Paul himself says, through faith we establish the law, right? The death of Jesus established the validity of the law. So the law, what? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments still stands, still stands. But why am I bringing out the Ten Commandments? What does this have to do with anything? Because this here right this here in colossians so if this here is not the ten commandments then it's a different law which law what is he talking about here having spoiled principalities and powers he made show of them openly triumphing uh, triumphing over them in it how did Je how did jesus do that by dying and what did the ceremonies, what did the law contain in ordinances, what did the Jewish temple system, what did it serve? It was all a sign or symbol of Jesus Christ, all of the temple situation with the sacrifice of the lamb, the, the showbread, the holy, the ho most holy, and all these kinds of things with the washing basin and or the altar and the burning of the lamb and all that kind of stuff and every year every year you had all of the ceremonies your feast of trumpets your passover all of these kinds of things all of these things were pointing to it was the gospel of jesus before he came and jesus christ when he died he fulfilled that whole thing thus bringing that system to an end so in colossians what has been nailed to the cross is not the Ten Commandments, is not the Ten Commandments. It is the Jewish system of sacrifice 
and ordinances and rituals and feast days and all of these kinds. That's what's been done away with. And let's go on to see, right? Having spoiled principality, he made a show of them, oh, triumphing. Oh, this is talking about making this uh, an analogy. And it, then it says, let no man therefore, so because of this, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or new moon, moon or the Sabbath days. That's plural. So this is not the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. Not the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. Sabbath days, because the holidays were days of rest. Sabbath just means rest days. You can, uh, Sabbath here, holy day, Sabbath is just days of rest. That's all it means. It's not the Sabbath day, because whenever there was on all of the feasts, people, all of the holidays, the Jewish holidays, they would stop working for the period of, of that. There would be no work done. Okay. So this has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments at all. It says here, which what which are which are shadows of things to come but the body is of christ so this is talking about the sacrificial system that pointed towards jesus christ's coming and when he came he fulfilled it and it was now done away with we no longer have to keep the feast days eat the certain things prescribed for the feast days like at the passover you had the passover lamb you didn't have a passover chicken or a passover goat you had a passover lamb and all these kinds of restrictions and stuff like that that's what it had to do with nothing else absolutely nothing else so that's all it's talking about and when jesus died all of those things were fulfilled so we no longer have to keep those days we no longer have to keep the jewish feasts we no longer have to sacrifice lambs and all and do all of these offerings and we no longer have to do that because it was all fulfilled in christ and if you continue to do so then what you are tacitly then saying is that jesus christ did not die for you okay now what does this have to do with anything? So that's the context, right? So this has nothing to do, A, with the Ten Commandments, and B, has nothing to do with eating and drinking in general, right? So when he says, let no man, so you will notice here, right, when it says, here, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of a new moon or the Sabbath days. Therefore, you can go and do whatever the hell you want. Does it say that? No, it does not say that. It doesn't say that at all. At, at no point do you see in that verse saying, right now, because no man can judge you in this regard, you can now go and do whatever the hell you want. Nowhere does it say that. Absolutely nowhere does it say that because later on we see that Peter in the vision when God brought down the, the blanket, right? God brought down the blanket and showed him all these unclean, unclean animals and he says, kill and eat. Even at that time, Peter was still abiding by the dietary restrictions that were common, which was a different kind of, of law because the Jews had many, many laws for all different kinds of types of governing all kinds of things. He was still following the dietary prescriptions. And the dietary prescriptions were set up. Why? Because God understands, first of all, He made you. He knows what is good for you to eat. And He knows what is not good for you to eat. And God understands that there is a relationship between what you eat and the state of your health versus your ability to have some kind of a proper spiritual life. God understands the link. And so He says to them, listen, even though... Even though after the flood, because before the flood, there was no commandment allowing people to eat meat. None, right? None whatsoever. The original diet was vegan. End of story, was vegan. After the flood, in order to meet a need, it's not God's will, but he's making a concession. Because why? Because there was a flood. Everything had been shot to hell. Right? There was no vegetation, no crops, and some crops, for anyone that understands anything about farming, some crops, crops take really, really long time before you actually can harvest. You've got to plant, and you've got to have a few seasons before the plants mature. and all the, So they had no choice, no choice. And he says, even though I'm going to allow you to eat meat, I am not going to allow you to eat meat indiscriminately, right? Because not all of the meat is good for you, right? I actually need to find a, a, a verse here. Um,
Right. Right. So we have here. Here we have, right. So. Again, it says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Right? So just because you can does not mean you should. So this is the principle that is going on in here. God is like, we have to eat meat, and now just because I've permitted you to eat meat does not mean that you can just go out and just and just eat whatever you want. First of all, okay? So there were restrictions put in place because God understood that not the all things are healthy, and the literature abounds with evidence that the the dietary restrictions of the Jews. If you are going to have a, a meat in your diet, the dietary restrictions from the of the Jews is the single healthiest carnivorous diet that you could possibly follow. The literature abounds. Okay? The literature abounds. And and once you investigate how animals metabolize, how how animals uh excrete uh, uh, toxins, how animals sometimes accumulate toxins in their meat, you understand very, very quickly why it is that God allowed the, some animals to be eaten and other animals not to be eaten. And another thing that we understand is that before the flood, mankind used to live a very, very long time, whilst after the flood, on a new diet and all these kinds of things, suddenly the lifespan of mankind went from hundreds of years down to down to and it shrank steadily until 100 about 120 years 100 years was an absolute maximum that all of a sudden you got the shrinkage down do you think diet had something to do with it of course it did and if you go and read at what meat actually does in your body you understand why it actually because it, it the, the literature abounds however does this mean that we must just throw away does this support the vegan hypothesis not entirely not entirely and we must we will we will get there so it says here all things are lawful for me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but not but all things edify not so a lot of people now this is so you've got two sides there's always an there's always two sides you've got the one side that says we can eat whatever we want no matter how degenerate and unhealthy we become right and then you've got another side that wants to treat Every single thing you eat or do not eat like it's a sin, right? I have those people in my church, right? Because my church, the Seventh-day Adventists, we have, unlike any other uh, Christian denomination I have ever seen, we have a health message. We teach that you have to that you have to combine a spiritual, a healthy spiritual life with a healthy physical life. If you have to combine the two. Otherwise, you're going to come into problems, right? We teach the so Seventh day Adventists were vegetarians before a uh, hundred years before any of this became fashionable, okay? Ages ago, ages ago, right? In the mid, in the mid to late 1800s already, we were saying, listen, people, lifestyle goes hand in hand with spirituality, hand in hand, okay? But a lot of people in in, even in my, do, in my denomination, want to say, like, if you drink any alcohol, it's a sin. You're going to go to hell. If you eat a piece of salami, you're going to go to hell. Rubbish. And this is why I made the point about the Ten Commandments. How, let's have a look at the Ten Commandments, right? Very carefully. Here's the Ten Commandments. It says here, No gods but me. Not make yourself an idol. Not misuse the name of the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day. Respect your... Still still applicable, by the way. Still applicable. Because otherwise, if you get rid of the fourth one, you have to get rid of all of them. Okay? So this is an abridged version, by the way. This is not complete. This is abridged. Respect your father, your mother, on your father, mother. You must not commit murder, adultery. You must not steal, not give false evidence, and do not covet your neighbor's business and all his bits and pieces now ladies and gentlemen do you see a law in there that has anything to do with food what you eat and drink nothing absolutely nothing the idea that a substance can can have some intrinsic sin value is absurd right and you will not find such a doctrine in the bible 
right? That if a person eats pork, they have now committed a sin and they're going to go to hell because of it. Rubbish. Okay? Rubbish. This is why when Peter had the vision and God brought down that the, all these unclean meats and he said, clean, kill and eat. And then he says, do not call any man unclean. And nowhere does he say, you can now, listen, I'm letting you eat what you want, <laughs> whatever the hell you want. Because people like to bring that one up as, at no point in Peter's vision does it say, <laughs> right, because of this vision, you can eat whatever the hell you want. No, he says, do not call any man unclean. And the reason why he put it into this context is because this was the eating habits of the Gentiles. And God wanted to make these stiff-necked Jewish people, right? Because this was a, the legalism of the Jews. This was the legalism of the Jews where they traded, they traded principle for, for, uh, uh, for legalism. Okay? Obey. And this is one of the, the again, you're always going to get some idiot who says, uh, if you try to keep the Ten Commandments, that's legalism. Rubbish. Right? Rubbish. Because the Ten Commandments are the principles according to which we live. The, uh, obeying the, t the Following the Ten Commandments is obedience. It's not legalism. Inventing your own rules and regulations, that is legalism. Okay? So when you come out now and you do away with the, with the principles of how to live and you start nitpicking on should we on the Sabbath, can we only cut one toilet paper or two toilet? Can I only walk five steps or 10 steps? That is legalism because then you're taking a principle and you're reducing it to a set to nothing but a set of do's and don'ts. That is the problem, right? So the overall principle is abandoned and people then try to haggle with with small things so in the ten commandments you see absolutely nothing that has to do with eating and drinking and the bible affirms that it's what you eat does not make you sinful right so here's another verse right here's another verse right uh da, 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 da. here we go verse 11 so the Bible agrees, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. So what's the principle? The principle is, is not eat whatever the hell you want. Okay. The principle is that what you eat doesn't, is not a sin issue. This is not a sin issue. Okay. It's only what comes out of your mouth. It's only what you do that is sin. Sin is is an act okay having so if let's say i have a propensity to lust okay the propensity to lust is not sin it's only actual it's only when i actually lust that it is that it becomes a sin i may want to i may find uh, see someone and i really dislike him and i'd like to kill him i th i imagine you think you know what the the world would be a better place without this person right sort of thing you have not sinned yet because you've not actually you you don't commit murder in that way right but but what is the principle because the bible does say even if you commit even if you call your brother fool and whatever else what are, what is it you are guilty of murder so what so God, jesus christ is trying to bring out a principle right so if you are even guilty of murder by some in some strange way but just by hating your brother, even though you haven't actually killed him, why can it be considered murder? It's because by holding hate in your heart, you eventually, the consequence of that is eventually murder. So here, so here is then where we get to the crux, to the crux of the matter. What goes in is not what, that, what defileth you. you. It is not a sin issue sort of thing. Only what you do. But what's the principle? When we're discussing these things, Christians... What do they do? Out the window goes, because we've got two, two uh, concepts. One, your body is the temple of God. Two, temperance in all things. Okay? In all things. Okay? So your body is the temple of God, and you've got temperance. And both of them fall under a principle that is called stewardship. 
Stewardship is a principle by which whatever gifts or whatever things that God has given to you and entrusted to you, you have a moral duty to preserve them and look after them, right? So you get a lot of Christians out there, right? Again, on the other side, who will say, who want to eat meat, and they will come up and they will say, God gave us meat to eat, therefore we can eat and do whatever we want to the animals because we have dominion over the animals. Rubbish. You have stewardship over the animals, which means that if you kill and eat needlessly, you are then guilty of violating the principle of stewardship. You are guilty of misusing the things that God has put under your care, right? Just because you've allowed to been allowed by God to eat meat does not mean you have the right to use and abuse animals. Okay, does not mean. And so you get these stupid Christians out there who go out there and say, we have dominion, therefore we can do whatever, whatever we want. And then what do, what happens? Vegans or, or people that look at Christians saying this and they think, well, Christianity must be evil. God must be evil. So you as an individual with that stupid mentality bring disrepute onto the religion. And what happens? You bear a false witness of the character of God, Right. Because you've misrepresented him. You've misrepresented him. And then vegans who say, oh, well, Jesus says, or the Bible says, that in the beginning we had to eat nothing but vegetables and whatever. And they go off and they go on a vegan lifestyle in an irresponsible, ignorant way where they do nothing but eat like a leaf of lettuce a day or something stupid like that. They become emaciated and end up in hospital. Right, and those people, so people on both sides bring disrepute onto to their faith and to God, because they think, well, God must be an idiot. If God allows those idiots and those idiots, then God must be an idiot, and that's what then they think, right? So, can you imagine how people would be converted if the Christian nations were all fit, healthy, of sound mind, of great intellect? Right? Decent personality and charisma. Because for those of you that are interested, go to one of my videos. It says how alcohol changes your big five personality traits. And have a look at that video. Alcohol changes your personality. If you are using alcohol, you become more criminal. So here's the principle. The alcohol in its own right is not sin. But... If you misuse it, you are more likely to sin. And therefore, whatever makes you more likely to sin, you should either temper or stay away from. That is the principle. It's not about nitpicking. Should we drink alcohol? Should we not drink alcohol? Is it? No. The big principle is, is this thing going to hinder? Is this thing going to get in the way of my salvation? If the answer is yes, you get rid of it. It's why the Bible makes a very, very... Uh, a hyperbolic thing where it says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck out your eye. If your arm causes you to sin, cut off your arm. It doesn't mean you must actually, but it's saying whatever in your life brings you to sin or makes it more likely that you will sin, get rid of it. It's that simple. That's the bloody principle, right? So all of these disputations about should we this, should we that, forget about all that garbage, right? This lifestyle, is it going to help me to resist sin or is it going to make it more likely that I will sin? That is the only question you need to ask yourself. Is the only question you need to ask yourself. And also, because I am a steward of all of the gifts that God has given me, is my lifestyle either making good use of what the Lord has given me or am I abusing and destroying what the Lord has given me, including my body? So this is one of the funniest things. You'll see people with tattoos and stuff like that. And then on the other hand, they'll be like, oh, well, now we must be healthy and exercise and stuff like that. It's complete idiocy, right? If your body, you shouldn't have tattooed yourself in the first place. And now you're obsessed with veganism or then you'll have a, 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 a carnivore Christian who then, oh, but tattoos are bad. Meanwhile, he's he's drinking or he's smoking or he's what it's complete. It's complete degenerate self incoherent stupidity within the within the Christian community where no one can decide what way is up and down and stuff like that. And at the same time, what Paul says, not everything, even though I can do everything, these things aren't necessarily unlawful, right? There's no sin 
in alcohol. There's no sin in pork. There's no sin in vegetables, in none of these things. But when I go about the use of these, do I cause my, uh, do I make it more likely for me to fall or, and do I make it more likely that others are going to look at me and, and by seeing what I'm doing, I'm going to bring disrepute upon my religion and I'm going to, and I'm going to besmirch the name of God and the character of God by my example. Right, because the the Bible says just because you have certain privileges does not give you the right to exercise those privileges. If by doing so you're going to be a stumbling block to other people, it's that simple. It's it's such a simple thing to understand, and and people just can't do it. Just can't do it. Right? It's it's nothing but this degenerate. It's about what I want to do. It's about what I want to force everyone else to do. It has nothing to do with it nothing to do with it right it's com it's completely and utterly utterly absurd and you've got christians running around like a bunch of idiots now personally i believe that the whole going vegan thing is great if you do it properly if you do it properly but if you can't right because here is why it's possible that you might not be able to do so so for example we need to understand a couple of things let's look at smoking Smoking introduces nicotine into the body, right? Now, it is actually the case that your body, if you are a non-smoker, your body produces its own nicotine in the required amounts for use in your body. Your body does that. Now, what happens? If you start smoking and you're getting this excess nicotine in the cigarette, your body then deregulates that system, so stops creating nicotine. Because your your body is is amazing, all right. Your 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 gene your genome, uh, your genes can and can detect, right? We are discovering that that our bodies respond and our genes respond to our environment, and they can adjust things and all these kinds of things in in response to environmental pressures, and we can see that, and it's amazing. So what your body will do is, oh, I'm already getting all of this nicotine from an external source. It will deregulate the production of nicotine in your body so that you stop producing nicotine. So what happens is one of the things that makes it difficult to smoke is that when you stop smoking, that supply of nicotine goes away. And now your body will take a certain period of time before it, before it up, up, uh, brings back that mechanism to start producing nicotine on its own. But until it does that, you are going to be somewhat reliant on an external source of nicotine until you... So that's why you need... Uh, and a lot of times you need to wean yourself off. It's not the case with everyone. It's not the case... And this is, again, this this thing. Everyone is different. Right, so now, how does this relate to the whole vegan issue? It's the same thing with eating meat. You, your body requires a certain number of amino acids. They call them essential amino acids, which means your body cannot synthesize them. It's unable. If you do not get them from an external source, right, you're going to die because your body can't do it. But then you get also another bunch of amino acids that's non-essential, which means that your body is able to take from that pool of essential amino acids and synthesize according to what it needs the non-essential amino acids it can synthesize that and make it itself now if you are constantly getting an external source of not only the essential but the non-essential amino acids what is your body going to do to the mechanism for synthesizing that amino acid it's going to deregulate it it's going to down downgrade it and it's going to stop it's going to stop working which then means what it means that if you want to become a vegan it's going to take you several months depending depending on your body it's going to take you several months if not maybe a year or two before you can completely become vegan because your body has to ramp up that production again because what you will find when you eat on a plant-based food you only get mostly essential amino acids but you don't really get this is why they call it plant proteins tend to be uh, uh, an incomplete pro it's not true of all plants. i mean you get plant you get sources of protein in plants that are 
totally complete like everything it, it, it's all there but you will find generally speaking that implants you tend to only get the essential and not necessarily the non-essential which means that then you're going to find that if you go vegan like overnight like many idiots do just overnight and you don't and you don't replace it with the appropriate plant substitute your legumes your beans your pulses and things of that sort you, you're going to come into problems you are going to come into problems so if i take myself as an, as an example i'm currently weaning myself off i've been doing for two years now weaning myself off meat and off dairy so i've got to the point where i consume no meat or dairy with the exception of cheese butter and lamb that's all i eat right i no longer eat beef i no longer eat chicken or fish or anything of that sort i now only eat lamb lamb because a i like lamb the most and of all of the meats lamb is actually even though it's more fatty than beef and all these kinds of things it's actually one of the healthiest one of the least toxic meats that you can possibly eat right the the it just hands down right um by quite a lot in fact sort of thing and and it also tastes the best as far as i'm concerned lamb is one of the best tasting so to date after two years i've got down to the use of a bit of cheese and a bit of butter and and lamb every now and then right and i feel the better for it um i've been able to because you get these people oh i'm gonna go vegan and they go vegan for like a year or two years and then boom they 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 fall to pieces because they just overnight right fall to pieces they don't do it properly they completely demolish themselves and then they're like oh well this vegan is rubbish i can't do it it's it's whatever the case might be right and the fact of the matter is it might not be possible for everyone to go vegan completely right because you don't know whether your body will ever because here's the thing most most people have for their parents their grandparents their great grandparents and so for generations have been eating meat so for generations your body has not really needed certain mechanisms and stuff like that so it might be that as an individual you can only reduce your amount of meat or dairy or whatever the case might be to a, a certain minimum amount and no further and it might only be your children or your children's children who might be able to go completely vegan right it might be a generational thing but because people are so are so idiotic right that no one looks at these things in a in a in a sound sensible way right it's it's completely and utterly ridiculous so you've got these all these extremes all over the place and and on both sides there's abject morons on the side of vegans and on the side of carnivores nothing but in the vast majority of the conversation is taking place between idiots right and every single person has an opinion and you must now eliminate carbohydrates and you must now eliminate this and it's like stop listening to other people get yourself get yourself you yourself take ownership take responsibility of your own diet and experiment and see at what point your mind is the clearest you th you can think straight your body feels the best and all of these kinds of things because only you can know where it is in the in these things where the where the perfect balance is right and if you're eating for the sake of eating because you've made eating an idol because you can make eating an idol whether you are vegan or whether you're carnival if you've made eating an idol you sin right because you've made eating an idol and it, or whichever way you go it, this is not supposed to be a test of faith why right? it's not a test of faith why because you don't you do not see thou shalt not eat pork in the ten commandments or thou shalt not drink alcohol in the ten commandments you don't see it there but just because you don't see it there does not mean give you the excuse to run amok to the point where you've become unhealthy and degenerate and you are more inclined to sin than you were otherwise because that's exactly what happens you and and here's one of the most important things that you have to realize one of the most important things that you have to realize okay i cannot even begin to stress how important this is okay how often how often do infidels use the fact that people get diseased as an excuse for believing that there is either no god or that if there is a god that he is incompetent and malicious how many infidels use that as an excuse 
right? Do you, don't they do the Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, all of these idiots, right? Love. Oh, if there is a God, then why do children get leukemia? Why do children? It's pedophrasty, by the way right pedophrasty because they you'll notice they always appeal to the children right it's a tactic they're being stupid oh or the the children it's like hello all life is precious not just the child okay you might feel more emotionally incontinent because it is a child but the fact of the matter is all life is precious okay but why do most why do most diseases exist most diseases exist because there is no temperance there is no health mentality in people whatsoever we, we we eat degenerate trash food day in and day out right day in and day out and and we expect that we're not and then these diseases all over the place diseases that were once never known we abuse antibiotics in our meat right in our meat supply that then get into us and get into our water streams and get into all over the place as well as uh, um uh, f certain phytoestrogens because of some of the other stuff that they're giving them there are uh, um like in some of the plastics in some of the plastics they have a uh, 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 hormone the chemicals which affect the hormone balance in your body they you've got um uh, 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 what is the name of the word uh there are so there's a class of chemicals that are known to promote obesity in people right so and and you find them in makeup so dear ladies all of that rubbish that you slap on your faces day in and day out that you can't seem to live without of without right that stuff is poisoning you all of those hair products and all of those face products and all of the endless the endless stream of 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 because here of 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 rubbish of chemicals and trash that comes into your home because you have allowed the, the 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 world out there to prey on your insecurities and on your vanity right that stuff is poisoning you it's not only poisoning you it's poisoning your kids and then we see all of these problems come into our systems and come into our bodies and then all the f and then the fact that we're degenerate is used as an excuse as an excuse to charge God with evil, right? I was just reading today. Turmeric has got a compound called curcumin, right? Curcumin is known, has been discovered to react because in cancer, one of the problems with cancer cells is every cell in your body is programmed to die, right? To die out at a specific time. So there's a clock. Every single cell in your body, right? Because you are constantly re regenerating new cells. One of the problems with cancer cells is that this this program is not there so they just keep going right they just keep going and multiplying to the point where they just take over right they found that curcumin has actually been known and been demonstrated right in turmeric has been demonstrated to reactivate the death cycle right in cancer cells so that they will self-destruct at their proper appointed time right so we know that because if we weren't eating this degenerate food and we were actually preparing our own healthy food even if there was a little bit of meat or a little bit of cheese or whatever the i don't care how you do it right but if it was balanced if it was seasoned if you were using your herbs if you were using your spices and if everything was balanced in the way that it was supposed to be most of our diseases wouldn't exist most of our diseases wouldn't exist and we wouldn't be would and and the west wouldn't be known as the fat degenerate bunch of lumbering neanderthals that the rest of the world is is the it, it is the the view of the rest of the world that westerners are of nothing but fat degenerates that's the view people have of the world right and one of the most idiotic one i just want to laugh whenever i see it is you get these fat people saying i'm victimized and ostracized how can you be uh, uh, victimized and ostracized and an outcast right if fat people are the majority in the west you are the majority <laughs> right by a long shot right you are the majority so you you are not the outcast you are the ones <laughs> sort of thing you know it's it's totally and 
utterly ridiculous because people are oh, well i for it it's like if you are if you're drinking alcohol if you are eating junk food all these kinds of things you've got no until you have corrected your diet and investigated your diet to its fullest degree and gotten rid of all the trash out of your kitchen and all of these chemicals out of your bathroom and all of these kinds of things you cannot you cannot say that you've done everything that you can possibly and if you don't get off your backside and go out and actually exercise and see the light of day every now and then you you can't say that you've done everything to get yourself right and also in fairness for some people it actually happens to be a medical condition you could have hashimoto's disease which is a thyroid problem you could have you whatever else you could also have these chemicals because here's the problem some of these chemicals they are known to to make you more fat right the in some of the plastics so take out chuck away the plastic in your house and trade it for glass right glass is cleaner right all of you all of you save the environment people right move to glass it's quite simple then then you're fine start using glass instead all of this trash in your in your because a lot of the a lot of that stuff has hormone the way it affects your hormones which then increases your obesity it increases the fatty tissue and all that kind of stuff gives you fatty fatty liver issues all kinds of things man so you got to check this stuff out and be more the principle in the bible which is what the health message in the old testament you can eat this but don't eat that but don't eat that and do this is because god had a mind for these people it's like if i'm going to allow them to do whatever I have to necessarily restrict it only to us you can go so far no further because beyond that you only you are no longer living just to sustain your life and all that you are now becoming you're going off into degeneracy where you're just going to be completely unhealthy and it's known that many meat products are carcinogens and all these kinds of things and then you get cancer and what happens how many people how many people lose their faith because that when they get sick because how can God let this happen to me right you're chuggling you you you're chugging uh, uh down uh, half a kilo of steak every single time uh, uh uh these these cured meats with all the nitrates and all the carcinogens and all that trash you you you're chugging a, a bottle of jack daniels every night and so and then you, and then you want to sit back and have the audacity to say dear lord why me and then lose faith in god because you've gotten sick how many people lose their faith because they get sick how many people use the fact that one of their relatives or loved ones is sick in order to lose their faith right so it's not just about oh i want to can i eat and can i drink because i have the right rubbish at the end of the day every single one of you are trying to make it to heaven you right fair enough you're trying to you're trying to get to salvation you want to make it to heaven right but if you are sinning and you don't repent right because ain't no sinners going to heaven by the way okay you need to repent and all this now what's going to make you more likely to it does this thing make it more likely that i'm going to lose my faith right if the how many people would still have their faith think about it how many people would still have their faith if they hadn't encountered tragedies within their families of sickness and disease how many people lose their lose their faith for that reason alone because of ill health tragedies in the family or in the loved ones and stuff like that and how often do you hear atheists and the, the infidels of every kind say oh because god allows disease and the cancer in the children and the tumor on the neck of some poor african chained to the back of an elephant in the hot sun because you know therefore god doesn't exist or he's he's a cruel malicious person right just think of the principle for heaven's sake right think of the principle get yourself right healthy right the body is the temple of god you have a stewardship over your body you have stewardship over what you eat over the stewardship over the animals stewardship over the vegetables over the plant kingdom you can't just go ripping stuff down as well right because here's here's <laughs> just to show the degenerate stupidity of hum of human beings the vegans are saying we're destroying the world because of all of this cattle because of all this meat because we have to demolish farmlands 
<laughs> we have to no, demolish. We have to demolish uh, natural habitat to get place for grazing all of these animals, right? And that's their argument. <laughs> but then on the other side, you have these morons say, "Oh, well, farming does it as well. Demolishes the the uh, natural habitat in order to make place for farmlands." <laughs> okay, from both sides, uh, both appealing to nature because we're killing nature. <laughs> <laughs> you have the carnivore saying carnivore is better for nature and you have the vegan saying that ve that being vegan is better for nature who's right the truth is they're both they're both wrong they're both wrong and they're both a bunch of imbeciles what right it is the misuse right think about how much food we waste think about how much food we throw away right when you go to the supermarkets Right? When you go to the supermarket and you see, oh, this nice tomato, this nice pepper, this nice whatever. Did you know, right, that every single piece of fruit or vegetable that does not look in a, a specific way gets thrown away? Did you know this? It just gets thrown away. It doesn't make it. Right? So if you've got a carrot that doesn't look nice and picture you know, picture perfect like a supermodel carrot right if the carrot's got maybe other it's a bit funny shaped and stuff like that it they throw it away the waste right why because we are too stupid to realize that just because the vegetable is a funny shape it doesn't mean that it's not good in fact if the vegetables nothing in the wild grows in a nice uniform little way doesn't happen doesn't happen but because the industry has decided well we have to have the pepper that looks x y and z and the grape that looks like this otherwise throw it away the amount of waste right sheer amount it's because we misuse is because we violate the principle whether you are farming cattle or whether you are farming vegetables it doesn't matter it's it's degenerate idiot corrupt greedy waste and mismanagement of resources of land of all kinds of things the sheer waste the waste of restaurants the, the restaurants waste so much you cannot understand how wasteful restaurants are how wasteful so a lot of these things are how absolutely wasteful they are you can't you can't believe sort of thing you know it's it's and then and not only that wastefulness but then like in this country in the uk we have the nhs the vast majority of the people in the nhs are there because they don't look after themselves that's it that's it because the idiot is is because he's a drunkard because he eats uh because they drink five red bulls or six or 20 red bulls a day right how many people suffer from depression Depression can be caused by inflammation. Your diet, if your diet's not right, it can cause inflammation. It can cause uh, disruption to various hormones and stuff like that, like we were saying earlier on, which then leads, what? It can lead to depression, can lead to suicidal thoughts, can lead to nihilistic thoughts. Can, it, it, your, your, the, the, your body, what you put in can completely change your body and completely and has a massive influence yes it's not what goes in but what comes out that make that defiles you that makes you a sinner but let me tell you something what goes in significantly either increases or reduces the chances of what comes out being the kind of thing that will defile you how often do you read the news some idiot went and slapped his mother or some guy some moron went in and, and raped a woman or some chick went out and uh, drove over her friend and in every single story the idiots were drunk it always started at the pub right it always started at the pub and now you've got these morons with this vaping stupidity the blowing up in their faces <laughs> i i wish man i was i was in i was in the movies a while ago and there was this moron i had to tell him what are you doing you're vaping in there now now not not only did we have to smell this everywhere the, the 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 cigarette smoke of these degenerate idiots who wanted to pollute their lungs right we now have to smell the second secondary fumes of something which has not yet been proven 
to either to actually be good for you by the way to be uh, health neutral right in fact they're discovering that even the vape stuff is actually bad for you right so we've these inconsiderate degenerates we now have to put up with that stuff and now this thing is blowing up in their faces and they're realizing that hang on wait a minute these things are actually not good for you right if you are stupid enough to roll something up set it on fire and put it in your mouth you deserve to have that thing blow up in your face i'm sorry i've got no sympathy because you you lighting so <laughs> you see <sit> on fire <laughs> who was the person that decided hey i'm gonna roll this thing up i'm gonna i'm gonna light it i'm gonna set it alight and i'm gonna suck on it <laughs> Who decided back in the depths of history past that this was a fine plan, right? Yeah, all oh, that good idea. You know, who was the first person to ever smoke something? I would love to have a conversation with a guy, right? Oh, good idea. Gonna <laughs> hit on fire. Fantastic. This is the way. This is the way to go. <laughs> Uh, only to <laughs> only to have people <laughs> say, "Oh, you must. This is actually good for you, right?" Like people used to say back in the day about cigarettes. It's actually good for you. G the GP, the doctor, this GP, he only smokes Camel, right? Because it's the way to go, right? Human beings, man, it just just the depths of imbecility. <laughs> blows up in my face oh what did you expect really <laughs> oh man <laughs> i do nothing but eat mcdonald's five times six times ten times a week mm, i wonder why i'm sick and dying and in the hospital right the billions that the nh that goes down the nhs toilet right to, uh, the, the tune of some billions every year of money that would otherwise not need to be spent if people just looked after their health took responsibility practiced stewardship over my health over my body i'm going to be responsible for my health and for my body rather than just dump dump the the the, the consequences of my degenerate irresponsibility onto a system that indiscriminately uses other people's money to to throw at the issue which is essentially what the nhs is the nhs is a license for you to be a degenerate uh, uh, uh totally lacking in health conscientiousness whatsoever that you can do whatever you want to yourself and you can just and you can just go to r uh, and they'll fix it for you right no responsibility no it the whole, entire nhs system is nothing but one big big incentive to say don't worry about it take no responsibility for yourself whatsoever go ahead and be as unhealthy and degenerate as possible right and when the entire system collapses don't worry we will just get the taxpayer to give us more money <laughs> government institutions are the only system on the planet where the more they fail the more money you are required to give them right which is why it's gen not always but you know in the private sector if you screw up you get fired no no not 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 the public sector if they screw up give them more money increase the wages <laughs> anyway ladies and gentlemen i hope i hope this sinks in right it's the it's the principle of the matter the principle does this make me more likely or not to violate God's moral law. Yes or no? Is it more likely to make, because that's what it does? Cigarettes, uh, drugs, alcohol, bad lifestyle in general. It, and we know that this this is. Please go and check that video of mine. Right? How alcohol influences your personality, your personality traits. Right? Because it brings down your conscientiousness. The lower you are in conscientiousness, the more likely you are to commit a crime. It's not guaranteed, of course. You know, you're always going to have some degenerates who's going to be like, oh, but it's not guaranteed. And therefore, right, there's always someone who thinks they're the exception, okay? The lower you are in conscientiousness, the more likely you are to commit a crime. End of story. 
lowers your uh, a bad health is specifically drugs alcohol those are the worst but all other things as well all the i mean because all the caffeines and the sugars and the just the ill health as it depresses as it depresses you right because that's what these things do it depresses you it addles the mind your conscientiousness goes down it means you're more inclined to be criminal your agreeableness goes down means you're more likely to be argumentative you're more likely to to lack empathy you are more likely to get into fights with other people and just not get along with people in general uh uh, uh uh, your extroversion goes up, which means you not only are you more likely to be social, which is why usually the most social people going out there tend to be uh, drinking in groups and social smoking and all these kinds of things, right? But increase in extroversion is comes with it an increase in uh, in arrogance, um, uh, uh, unsubstantiated or uh, yeah, an unreasonable or unsubstantiated self-confidence and all these kinds of things. It increases your neuroticism, so you become more emotionally volatile, you become more emotionally withdrawn, you can become paranoid, and that that on its own is a whole bag of worms because it's depression, it's schizo the, 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 the neuroticism is depression, it's the schizophrenia, it's all the personality disorders, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just a mess. It's an absolute mess, right? So... When these people try to, oh, but I have the right in the Lord, he says, don't judge. I'm sorry. But first of all, it has nothing to do with eating in general. That, those, that passage, that verse in, in the Bible where it says, don't, don't worry about these things, right? Not that which goes in, but that which goes out. It's talking about sin, right? It's talking about sin and the fact that it's still talking about sin. That that which defileth, right? Still talking about sin means that the Ten Commandments still stand. And that passage in Colossians is about the ceremonial law, the sacrificial system, the, and the whole system of holidays and rest days that were and the eating restrictions and stuff like that that were associated with the, the ceremonial law. That's it. That's the only thing that got nailed to the cross. It's not the Ten Commandments, right? And just because the Ten Commandments exist, it does not, none of them contain, right, to refresh, none of them contain eating and drinking things. So the eating and drinking are in its own right is not intrinsically sinful but if you take it to excesses to the point where you degenerate yourself to the point where you are more likely as a consequence to to violate the law of god the ten commandments then immediately you know that you are putting yourself on the path to sin you might have not sinned yet but you've put yourself on the path and then once once you sin and then you know, uh, and then if the personality is addled and all that kind of stuff, if you degenerate, whatever, then you don't want to say accept responsibility. Uh, uh, you won't. You won't want to repent because you think you're justified, even if you're not, and all these kinds of things. And then you're a total mess. You ruin your life. You ruin the life of your family, sort of thing. If you're unhealthy and you die, and then what happens to your family, right? What happens to your family or your child, right? You are a parent and you've got stewardship over your children. God entrusts your children to you and you, with your ignorance, are going to allow your five-year-old child to grow up on sweets, sweets and chocolates, right? And only to have a heart attack. What do you think, what do you think is going to happen to you when you're standing before God and he asks you, what did you do with the child that I blessed you with? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. It's not my fault that I did nothing but stuff their faces with junk, right? And go, don't come tell me that eating healthy is more expensive because it's not, right? By moving myself, so I personal, te personal testimony, myself, by moving over to eating more healthy, right? I've cut my food bill down by half, by half, at least. Okay, so don't come tell me it's more expensive because it's not. Absolutely not. Right? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that it brings some clarity. And it's just, I'm sorry if I look very annoyed, but it's just because this actually came up yesterday. And it's just so, so ir to see the narrow mindedness with which people treat these issues, man. It's completely, it's so silly. They've for totally forgotten the principles, stewardship faithfulness body is a temple the other people's bodies are a temple don't lie by saying that this is good for you when it is not 
because you're trying to push an ideology completely ridiculous completely ridiculous and those and the and for those people that are interested in like the con more conspiratorial types that the elites are trying to g degenerate human society it's amazing how not all of them real catch on to the fact that they're playing both sides because i've heard people say on the on again on the side of the vegans oh the the elites you're just making the corporations more rich and more this and more that and they're trying to degenerate the, and the carnivorous the carnivorous people will say the same thing meanwhile on both ends people are benefiting <laughs> On both ends, the corporations are, are winning because you've not only do you have big meat on one side and on the other side, you have basically big industry, just all the all the big uh, industry of just GMO and and GMO corn and soy and soy. <laughs> it's like we're going to fight the corporations by eating soy for breakfast, lunch and supper. Can you imagine a more idiotic thing? Right, <laughs> gonna fight. We're gonna fight the elites by eating soy. Right, <laughs> the elites <laughs> with what they've done with soy. You know, all of these GMO type of things. You know, and just because it says non-GMO doesn't. You know, anyway. So, you know, corporations. I mean, do you do you not do you th really think do you. <laughs> Do you really think that you're not supporting some elite corporation just because you've gone vegan? Really? <laughs> Do you not have you not come to understand that the health conscious market is a market for exploitation, right? The same with the meat and in between the two because neither are necessarily doing things correctly in the middle is big pharma who's quite happy that all of these morons get absolutely nowhere in the conversation so that they can just keep dispensing drugs to all of the pathetic degenerates who can take no responsibility whatsoever for their own health who keep prescribing the most moronic diets most injurious diets on the planet right especially especially women constantly prescribing these demented diets to each other all the time that do nothing but damage and you constantly on a seesaw of, of of fat and skinny fat and skinny and you're depressed and you don't know what to do with yourself and you recommend this trash to each other where is your sense of responsibility not only for yourself but for your fellow sister right that you would recommend this garbage this 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 degenerate m mentality of of doing anything but having a, a a solid decent kind of diet and lifestyle that you would recommend these idiotic diets and those that are fat that you would recommend being fat to your sisters R what happened to feminism there caring for women that that you would that anyone would recommend being fat that would recommend it as a right right i mean come on might as well recommend that they put a that they put a, a bullet in their own brains is what you should recommend to them right the same with these seesaw diets when you starve and then and then binge and star and starve and binge starve and binge what happens to your hormones your hormones go to hell right so which ends up actually contributing to your obesity it screws up your thyroid so then you end up having hormonal issues which then contribute to the obesity uh it can it can actually cause autoimmune diseases which then will attack your thyroid and cause obesity and depression right depression throws right in there psychosis all these kinds of things because you're this constant up and down completely destroying your body so that you like this within a few years right or on all the, all the drugs because i'm depressed and 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 anxiety and all that kind of stuff eat properly and exercise it's that simple and pay attention and adjust as you need and pay attention to the way you feel and all that kind of stuff and stop expecting it takes years you, you sh do not expect for two years that you're going to look like a supermodel right forget that right if you if, if 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 anyone can come to you and give you a pill which makes you look like a supermodel in three months you can be guaranteed that that thing if that thing doesn't kill you now it'll kill it, it it'll destroy you enough so that you're going to pay for it later simple as that 
anyway i've said enough ladies and gentlemen i hope that helps you clarifies and does whatever i've said my piece i've had my rant on this issue just stop being stop being stupid right it's just think about the principle of the matter cheerio and god bless